I think we are live. We have the the camera. It is working. We have the the name. It is working. We are here. Welcome everybody. How uh, how is our how is our audio as we get started? Yeah, talk about thumbs up. Absolutely. Um, so welcome everybody to our stream. The first ever stream here on DevCycle HQ Twitch. Um, my name is Andrew, a developer advocate here at DevCycle, and I am super, super excited um, to be here to kick off uh, our first ever stream here on Feature Focus uh, with one of my favorite people um, at DevCycle. And I don't have to say that just because he is definitely my boss. Um, I'm gonna throw over to uh, I'm gonna throw over get Kobe on here, unmute him. Kobe, how's it going, man? Good. Most definitely not your boss, but you know. <laughs> all right, Su pseudo boss. It's all right. Any time that there's a the word founder in somebody's job title of the company you work for, um, they have all all of the power. <laughs> Um, uh, good times. Awesome. Yeah. And so, so welcome, Kobe. Welcome, chat, too. Like, I'm super, super pumped to see everybody here. Um, Kobe, how, how's your day going so far? Uh, no complaints. I mean, only complaint is the Leafs lost last night. So, that was a depressing moment. It's a poor start to the day. It does happen. But I mean, really, it's kind of the rarity that the Leafs win, isn't it? Isn't that sort of the, the, the running joke? You're one of those people. I'm one of those. So, <laughs> so listen. I'm from I'm from Ontario originally, um, but uh, but I uh, grew up outside of Ottawa. So um, I definitely stand for the Sens, uh, hundred percent of the time. Yeah, um, I, uh, Leaf Sens in the late '90s, early 2000s give me life. I still I still lean on that. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> well, um, Kobe, super psyched to have you here. Chat, super psyched that all of you are here as well. Um, and uh, if you're not sure where you are and what is happening, that's okay. You are here on Twitch. You are looking at a computer screen. Um, and you are here at Feature Focus, uh, first ever live stream by DevCycle. Um, as I said before, my name is Andrew. I'm a developer advocate at DevCycle. This is Kobe. I'll let Kobe introduce himself this way. Yeah, I'm a co-founder, head of product, and yeah, super stoked to be here. It's my first time doing this, so hopefully I'm not too awkward. Awesome. Um, so uh, if you have just happened upon this Twitch stream, which is totally okay, uh, you may be asking yourself, what is a dev cycle and how can I get one? Uh, well, the answer is this. Um, so uh, DevCycle is a feature flag management uh, platform that has been designed to help you, the amazing developer, to build maintainable and scalable code. So we, uh, we are here to make your life as a developer easier um, through the wonder that is feature flags and feature flag management. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about exactly what this means. So if you've never heard about feature flags before and you're like, what is this feature flag thing? And can I get two of them? Um, the answer is yes, you can have many of them. Um, and uh, we're going to tell you a little bit more about what that looks like um, kind of as we, as we go through the stream. Uh, but I do want to give you sort of a rundown on uh, what this specific stream is about uh, and then how the stream is going to work. So um, as we're kind of going through um, chat, feel free to throw questions, comments, uh, thoughts, um, opinions, critiques, all of these things out to us because we'd love to, to, to engage with you. Um, but uh, really this stream, um, uh, Feature Focus is a uh, monthly live changelog stream uh, where we get the chance to share things that we're really excited about that we are building at DevCycle um, for you, the developers who are using DevCycle. Um, and obviously we are constantly releasing. There are new features being released like on a regular, regular basis. And so there's lots of stuff to talk about. And we sort of are choosing some of the things that we're really, really excited about um, that we want to share with you in the stream. So today, sort of over the next like 40 minutes or so, um, we're going to introduce kind of three or four features, um, give you a chance for some Q&A, um, and then also give you a chance to look at our public roadmap and uh, vote on things that you would really like to see or just give us other ideas of things that you'd really like to see um, over on DevCycle. And because nobody comes to a stream unless they are bribed, um, we also will be giving away uh, three 
$20 gift card um, and we'll tell you how you can win one of those gift cards at the end of the stream. Um, if you are a dev cycler who is watching the stream, alas, you are not eligible to win those cards. So if you are not a dev cycler or if you can pretend to assume someone else's identity for a short period of time, you could uh, you could win one of these awesome uh, $20 gift cards that you can use wherever you are in the world. Uh, yeah, what do you think, Kobe? Do you think that we are going to have some folks that are uh, that are that are um, having a little bit of an identity crisis today to get their hands on some of these gift cards? I mean, I'm looking at Jamie, whose background is in like privacy and security. He'll probably figure it away. Nice, nice. Um, so, uh, so like I said, um, today's stream is all about, uh, is all, oh, I'm not using all my banners. Uh, there we go. Let's try this one. <laughs> Welcome to Feature Focus. Hooray! You're here at Feature Focus. Um, and then this is Feature Focus. Um, so you came to the Feature Focus stream. Uh, it wouldn't be Feature Focus if there was not a segment of the show called Feature Focus. Um, but it's not the only segment, mind you. Um, so I'm going to pull my uh, screen share off of there um, because uh, it is not I, not the the lowly uh, uh, developer advocate that is going to share these features. It is going to be the one, the only, the special guest, the Kobe, uh, who's going to share um, a couple of really cool features um, on the DevCycle uh, platform. And we're also going to talk a little bit about kind of what makes DevCycle a little bit different in the way that we do um, feature flag management. Uh, so I'm going to pull this off. Oh, look, our names are showing up there again. Um, and Kobe, if you want to add your screen to the stream, I'll add it on there. Yeah, can do. And our, <clears throat> did you want to start off going through right into the features? Do you want to start off kind of on the more of that uniqueness Ooh, tangent I like you it. were talking about? Yeah, let's do it. Let's talk. Let's talk uniqueness because I feel like this is so. This is something if uh, if you're on stream uh, and you're watching right now. Um, yeah, uh, before we jump into this, um, somebody in chat, can you just say, how's our audio? How's the background music? Is everything kind of, is everything feeling syncopatico? Do you that, feel bonita? That is the question. So, those are two good words, syncopatico. Soup's good, yo, love it. Um, amazing, so yes. Uh, so uh, now that I've lost my train of thought, yes. So unique, unique things about, thank you chat. Chat feels bonita. I love that like, memes are just everywhere now and we can bring the twitch meme or the the uh, the the um tiktok memes over to over to, to twitch i don't even know that meme uh <laughs> so mind. all you gotta do is go to google and google do you feel bonita and your uh feeds will be overrun with all of the things do you feel bonita oh okay. there you go um so i love that we will just be hearing do you feel bonita in the background for the rest of this stream I should know um, that, Damn. You should. So, uh, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about um, this conversation that is a big differentiator between uh, DevCycle and a lot of the other feature flag management uh, uh, platforms that happen to exist. Not going to name any of them because this ain't their channel. Um, but uh, one of the things that we've been having a lot of internal conversation with this recently, because it is a really big differentiating factor, is flags versus variables. So uh, before we even start, um, I just want to see for chat, chat, are you, are you team, are you team flag or are you team variable? I don't, I know what the flag emoji is, uh, so you can throw that in there. Um, you can, but there's a lot of dev cyclers on here, so they might know that this is, that this is a little bit of a trick question. And why is it a trick question, Kobe? Because flags are variables and hey. variables are flags. All right. So what do you mean by that? When you say, I've seen flags before. So um, if you're just kind of new to this world of feature flags, at the end of the day, uh, a feature flag is really just sort of a, a really cool if then statement that is existing in your code that allows for you to turn features on and off um, uh, using our platform. So maybe you've got a new feature that you want to roll out to a subset of users. Um, maybe you just want to be able to have like an emergency break to put on a new feature that you've done a lot of testing for. That's what feature flags are there for. They're there to provide you with that tool to target specific users that are in your platform or to like really just 
turn off that feature for everybody and turn it back on as you're going through the development cycle and lots of other use cases that we'll talk about on future streams. Um, but how can a flag and a variable be the same thing, Kobe? Well, I guess uh, the original, original concept of a feature flag was just this, uh, I think when you say if then, that if then was literally just like true or false on or off. But over some period of time in the history of feature flagging, feature flagging and probably like remote config have kind of like blended into like one kind of concept. And so you have the straight flags that are Boolean on and off, true and false, but then you have teams that want to do more than that. You may have like three states of a feature. And so instead of doing an if then on like a true false statement, you might have a number variable and do a case statement on zero, one, and two to have your three different variations. But then you may also say that, hey, once I turn this feature on, I may want to remotely configure it with various different kinds of things, whether that's like the API endpoint that that new feature is hitting or whatever it may be, right? So you then have string very uh, like string values or potentially like full JSON values. So from from our perspective, um, there are other reasons uh, for calling them variables and we'll get into that, I think with the features that we talk about, um, but it encompasses more than just that straight toggle on or off and variables, at least for us, seem to align better to what it is, all the things that, that we do. I love that. And if you are out there and you're saying, I have checked out documentation or the DevCycle platform and I see variations and I see variables and I see uh, um, other V words, um, it's because we love alliteration at DevCycle, um, but we're not here to confuse you. All of these, uh, all of these, these pieces that fall within kind of the DevCycle feature flagging, feature flag management world are really uh, powerful tools to help you use this, this, um, this concept of feature flagging, feature flag management toggles, whatever you want to call them, um, to really make your uh, developer workflow and your release cycle. Um, a lot different in a really, really good way. Um, so, so yeah, I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm going to add your, your stuff to the stream, Kobe. Um, and, uh, I'm going to kind of turn things over to you. Um, because I think you've got, uh, uh, something that is very related to this conversation on, uh, variable types, um, to start things off. Yeah. I mean, I think the whole point here, uh, as we talked about um, here, I'm just going to like readjust all of my different windows. Um, so if I look to the right, it's because I'm looking at you, I guess. Um, but yeah, we'll go through uh, some new features. Yeah, I think uh, we have a bunch of things, I guess, in changelog and we picked a few out. Um, but one of the ones, uh, they kind of like flow with this idea that we're talking about in terms of uh, variables. Um, and so a few of these that we're going to go through, like in terms of initial variable keys, association, things like that. Um, and fundamentally, the important part is, I think, what uh, I was alluding to in terms of like, there's more to it than just variables or flags and remote config. Um, for us, actually, the way we've, I think this, because this is like the first time we've done this stream, maybe I'll go into a little bit more depth here. Um, but we do have a concept in uh, DevCycle of features versus variables. Uh, we don't actually call anything in the platform necessarily feature flag. What a feature is, is actually like a construct of like the full feature that you're building. So let's say a feature that I'm building, I've, this is just a demo account that I have, or like my own internal playground. And I like this one example of say like an in-app chat. So let's say I'm building in-app chat for my product, something like, uh, I don't know, can you see intercom? Yeah, cool, you see intercom. Intercom is something like in-app chat. Do you want to zoom in a little bit, Kobe? Like just zoom in your browser. I know oh. sometimes it's challenging. There we go. That all oh, look beautiful. Beautiful. Now it just like, now it looks so big. <laughs> um, cool. So if I'm say a developer, an engineer building this in-app chat feature, um, in DevCycle, I have this construct of a feature that just becomes a, a vessel for my flags. Um, and as we said before, my flags being variables. And the variables are some combination of tickets or work that like the engineers are working on to kind of bring this whole feature together. So when I set up a feature in DevCycle, what I'm going to have is like a bunch of variables that all make up the totality of this feature. I might have one variable 
likely that turns this new feature like fully on or off just says hey like no matter what i just don't want to see this and then i might have as i think i was talking about before um you know the concept of you know an api that it's hitting or like a fuller configuration uh that is happening like the starting message or colors or things like that or i might be developing some new code around a chatbot so if i think about it in terms of like developer and product manager workflow um i think about a feature as being tied to like the epic that i'm working on and the variables as being tied to you know some combination one or more like stories or tasks within that epic um and this is like super interesting i think i am going through this because it's important to like the next uh, functionality that we're talking about is it's like it's really really unique on the market like no one else uh, does this um, the way that this kind of like connection of variables within the context of a broader feature happens in any other platform on the market is through some sort of like secondary workflow so i might have I'll have like distinct feature flags that don't have any variables within them. And then I'll have to create some sort of like automation or define a prerequisite that says, hey, given, you know, this uh, feature flag of like real time demo is on, I also want in app chat to be on. And that can get like really complex if you're thinking about um, your features having many potential flags associated with them if they all need to be connected in these ways that aren't are non-obvious uh, it can be really really hard to manage it doesn't really match like a developer workflow and we're all about building a better developer workflow and developer experience so background um so now i can get into the things hopefully that was good background i don't know Muted. You're muted. Uh, I am 100% mute. I just did that thing that you should probably never do when you're running a stream, which is mute yourself. Um, yeah, I love that. That's like, this is train. Also, this is becoming like a training video. We got a lot of, we got a lot of dev cyclers um, in the house. So shout out to all of our dev cyclers in chat and that are watching. Um, so, so you're getting some, some uh, uh, like a nice refresher course too on stream, which I love. Yeah. So what's our first feature, um, Kobe? Uh, what's yeah, our so first feature of the day? Yeah, first feature of the day, I think, is uh, initial variable type. So as I said, uh, a feature and a variable are not the same thing. A feature isn't like a feature flag. A feature holds it. So it uh, holds a flag. But so what we were doing when we first launched DevCycle was the idea that like we just named um, a the first variable uh, the same name as the feature just to make it like super simple. Hey, like this is a new concept. No one else in the market does this. So we're like, hey, do we make how do we make this as easy as possible? But then that created some like confusion. It's like, why do I inherently have this uh, variable that has to be named uh, the same thing as the feature? So to simplify that concept, or at least to make that concept make more sense within the broader vision of what variables are, we now have uh, this concept here of initial variable key and initial variable type. We still try to keep this as simple as possible by doing some like autofill. So let's say my new feature is something along the lines of, since I'm like really, really bad at on the spot um, creativity, I'll call it like um, streaming functionality. So, it's like- So imaginative, Kobe, so oh, yeah. imaginative. Yeah, you know, it's like when you're on a, a road trip and uh, it's like 20 questions about the thing that you just spotted along the road, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, that's how my brain works. Very much that. Um, so this, uh, as you can see, I get to see streaming functionality uh, three times here. And this is that basically that same uh, simplification that I was talking about that we did originally to say like, hey, if you don't care about this, I don't want you to have to care about this. So it auto fills it in of like, hey, you get the feature key. Feature key is what you're gonna interact with uh, outside of the platform if you wanna like, if you, if you as a developer don't want to touch our platform uh, in terms of like the dashboard here and you just want to interact with our APIs and CLI, the feature key is that, uh, is your, you know, key to success there. Uh, <laughs> No, well no. done. No, I'm <laughs> laughing on the inside. I'm laughing on the inside. This is chat, why come on, chat. Where's the laughter? Where that was a good pun. That was Ew. good. 
There we go. Thank you. There we go. See, uh, thank you. Call me Carmelo. I appreciate uh, the love that you are throwing out for Kobe. Nice. Let's get the yes, there we go. Boom. Boom, Carm. I have Bonita. no idea who you are, Carmi Carmelo, but uh, we did not pay you to be here. Yes, Bonita. It was Bonita. It Bonita. Was Bonita there we um, go. And then the other side of this, like I said, is the initial variable key. So I can leave it the same and the Boolean is that simple, like on off. But let's say instead of streaming functionality as my key here, like I, I want my first uh, variable to instead be something like completely different uh, and I actually want it to be like my back end API being you know, it could be either on off or maybe it's the string, as I said, of like the different values that you might have for that API. Hey, like API v1, v2, v3. And you can give it a fire description. Again, I'm not good at on the spot, so I'm not going to do a description, but I'll create that feature. And instead of having my streaming functionality uh, initial variable key, I'll get it created with my uh, backend API key. And I get like, it, it does simplify out to on off, which I think, um, because we have to put something default there uh, instead of a, a nothing instead of just having like nothing. So you go in and you change it and you say, okay, I actually want like you know, api.devcycle.com slash v1 slash streaming would be the thing, right? Uh, so that's how you might change that. And so that's the whole fun idea behind uh, those initial uh, variable values. I love that. Um, now, I think one of the more other, I guess the other piece here that uh, we also want to touch on, uh, we're constantly pushing, you know, what variables mean. And I think the next feature we're talking about is, I believe, uh, a variable reassociation. We are. But before um, you go there, before you go there, Kobe, for anybody oh. who's watching the stream and you may be saying to yourself right now, Andrew and Kobe, what does this Boolean concept mean? What is a string? What is a JSON? Um, if you're asking those questions, this may be the wrong stream for you. Uh, but uh, Teachable Moments, uh, um, that on off is a Boolean Boolean flag. Traditionally, flags, like a lot of flags, a lot of platforms that are out there really kind of only focus on that Boolean. Um, if you don't know what a number is, um, that's okay. Uh, we're also here for you. We're here to support you. Um, and uh, yeah, great question that is coming in from the chat from uh, Mild Forest Fire. Can a full feature be turned off? Can a full feature be turned off? So could you grab that and turn it off for everybody, Kobe? Yeah, um, full feature can be turned on or off in any environment. So let's say I have my full feature here that has like my setting here that I guess this would be my just on or off that I just created. Like super great timing there, I guess. Um, and the full feature, the green and gray here actually does uh, suggest on versus off in a given environment. So in my demo project, which actually matches our DevCycle internal environments, I have these three environments, dev, staging, and prod. Uh, it can be anything. But uh, literally, this fun toggle is the concept of on or off for the entirety of um, like every bit of this feature, all these variations in the um, for this environment. So if I wanted to say, turn it on for everyone in production, uh, I would create my targeting, which would be something like all users, uh, hit all users. I'm going to give them my variation on. Uh, we didn't really talk about variations yet. Um, and then to actually turn it on, I do targeting on and just hit save. And boom, everyone would get that. Like literally everyone would get that. And if I needed to like very quickly turn it off, I can literally just hit targeting off and hit save. And that just turns it off for everyone. Boom. So unplanned. Thank you, Mild Forest Fire. Again, not paid to be here. Maybe you are paid to be here. I'm not quite sure who you are. Um, you may be on the Dev Cycle team um, and be paid to be here. But um, but yeah, so so variation again, another V that's in there. Um that uh yeah, well I think we'll talk about kind of as we go through this. But well, uh I yeah, mean we are getting a, a question that leads right into that. Actually. Oh, look at that. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, Mild Forest Fire, another question up on the screen here. Uh what value would the different variable key he's received if the full feature is turned off yeah um, so in that case uh that we just did there in terms of like the uh, environment being turned like off entirely that targeting being turned off uh everything that you create uh in devcycle in terms of like these variables need to have a uh let me just actually go to like something else um it needs to have a default value 
Um, so let me just grab the variable. So my backend API needs a default value. Like, so if it's a string, it needs to have a default string. Uh, I can actually grab the Boolean because it'll be a little bit clearer. Uh, the Boolean would just have um, like my true or false. So you just place that like true or false value in there uh, in terms of the default value. So if I turn my variable off and my default value is false, that's like what will happen now. Um, having said that, off may eventually mean something different than what was placed in code. And that's where variations come into play. So variations are actually just like full configuration. So we've simplified this down in the interface to call it variation on or off, but it doesn't have to be that. This could just be like, you know, configuration one or two, right? Um, in a lot, the, like ninety percent of cases, on like a release, like a release type feature, like a basic feature flag, it's going to be a variation on and off. Um, but you could have some concept like we internally do variation on and off, but then we'll have some concept of like an in progress configuration. And so it may be like my new API and this may like would be true for who, like be on for whoever gets it. Um, and so you can have as many variations as you want. And these are just like configurations of these flags, these variables in your code. And so for you, like off can mean instead of like, if you want to control what off means, you just hit like variation off here. Instead of targeting all users to variation on, I could actually have a like a clear, like controlled concept of variation off. I love that. Um, and uh, if you are watching this stream and saying to yourself, man, I love that you're going over the dev cycle UI, but I want to know what the code, I want to put these flags. Well, this is my plug for our future stream uh, called Does It Toggle, where we will be determining if things toggle, where we're actually going to be going through and doing some live coding. Um, so if you're enjoying these features and you're like, I want to try these features, but I want to do it live on stream with somebody else making all the mistakes. I'm your man. I'm here for you. I'm here for it. Um, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, so we talked about variables. We talked about kind of variations. I know we've got this idea of like maybe associating a variable differently. Maybe that's uh, that's a feature that we want to talk about. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Uh, the idea of variables as part of features um you know this idea that hey like uh a feature is made up of all these different component pieces well the other side of that is that a variable doesn't necessarily have to only be uh, related to one feature um over time a variable may want to be like you may want to reuse a variable for different things in different contexts especially when you think beyond just that idea of um a straight on or off flag like hey you might use a lot of people use feature flags to manage say permission sets in their projects so they use it to manage like remote configurations like we have some uh users that literally use it to like fake like backends by just like streaming in json data into their front end um, but so there's a whole bunch of different things that you might want to do. So like in that context, like I'll go back to the in-app chat. I have this idea of like a configuration, right? And I might go through the concept of releasing this in-app chat or like the API, but I, I don't necessarily want these to be forever tied to this specific feature. So I can actually like hypothetically, uh, remove you know, this variable, I can archive it. Like if I'm done, hey, if I'm done it, I can archive it. But from this, I think that's one of the other things you're talking about, like cleaning up. Uh, but that's a quick, easy, little lesser important one, I guess, or maybe important. But uh, if I remove it from the feature, save that uh, and get rid of it, I now have a variable here in my variable section that isn't associated with any feature. Um, so it's living there. It's basically delivering default to, you know, all my users uh, because it's not being configured in any way but let's say i want to use it in some other context um, and that's the reason i removed it i can now take either um that feature i just created and add that variable to it so now that chat configuration variable is actually available to me to use in another feature 
or I could create a whole new feature and grab it from there as well. Um, so this idea that a variable doesn't have to like live and die with like the feature that I originally created it created to house it is like extremely important because it creates like just a lot more like I guess extensibility of your code, right? As we're all trying to do, right? You try to like reuse things, reuse concepts, um, and so I can actually pull that pull this in here if it's relevant. And since again, I'm not very uh, creative, I will use the standard foo bar uh, and just like copy across so I can have valid JSON. There's somebody out there. There's the de whoever the developer is out there that created this like foobar concept, and they're like, I hope that I'm remembered for putting foobar out into the world. Um, they you you have not you have been forgotten. You have become the default. Exactly. So, so. Um, but yeah, so now this variable went on and just was moved from that first in-app chat feature and is now a part of my streaming functionality feature. So now I can configure it differently. I can do different things um, and plug for, I guess, a Hack Week project uh, that's just happening right now. The interesting part, if uh, anyone is looking deeply at what just happened, uh, the JSON that I put in here is completely different from the JSON that happened or that was uh, plugged in in the original feature. And this could be like completely no bueno, right? Like if my code is expecting uh, certain values here and now I'm like completely changing it. It had like color and like what the button does and the like welcome message or whatever. And now it says foobar. That's probably gonna crash my app. So there's actually like a hack hackathon project that's uh, working to allow you to set a schema for your variable. So you could say, hey, like the only accepted value values for this variable are X, Y, and Z, or the only accepted values for this string are whatever. It's like for any variable type, basically, basically saying like the engineer can control what the product manager puts into these values here um, without needing to give them a reference guide. I love that. I love that. Cool. Also, I gotta say, um, I love like no bueno, bonita. We are pulling in some Espanol into this stream. Uh, we like to, uh, we like to be, uh, what's the word? Uh, localized. We like to be localized for all of you, if only for a few words here and there on the stream. Um, ooh, and you've opened, you've opened the 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 gate now, Kobe, uh, on this Hack Week project. Um, so uh, yeah, question uh, from Mob Force Fire: uh, uh, Will that schema be trans? to the different apps that consume the SDK API. Um, and uh, if you are here and working on that Hack Week project, if you're in chat um, and you want to contribute that answer, uh, I will put you up on this, your answer up on the screen. But maybe, Kobe, do you know? Uh, as it's currently designed, it wouldn't, like, it's not living within the, like, the SDK. It's not living within, like, your application code to uh, stop it kind of, like, from breaking your code at that level. What it's actually doing is it's doing it at, um, it's saving it, essentially, to control it in this interface. Um, so there's definitely, like, some really interesting, I think, use cases there of, like, two levels of protection. But the idea being here is if I were to go and edit this very variation instead of it being at the SDK level and I can dump like all this in and it then protects it at that level what it's going to do is provide me a like a verbose error here that says foobar isn't accepted like it, the only accepted format here is like um you know color you need to set a color of this type like with this kind of format you need to set like a um, uh, an initial message of this format uh, so it's kind of like it's a step further up in that um, it would protect it here, not at the SDK level. But okay. uh, I think that double protection um, is always a good idea. So uh, Adam would love to, I think, hear that concept. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, the leader of that Hack League project. Ooh, that's a good question. So if you are here in chat and you are the leader of that and you want to connect uh, with Mild Forest Fire, throw your thing in the chat. Also, Mild Forest Fire, if you are interested, um, I'm going to plug this right now really quickly and then I'll replug it again later. You can connect with literally like the entire dev cycle team. You can at all of us um, by joining our Discord community if you're not already over there. Um, so yeah, if you go to bit.ly um, slash dev cycle Discord, you can join us over there. Um, now, do you want to pull up? I know we're, we're almost... 
we're a little bit at time, but uh, I want to I want to pull up this question because it's a good one. Um, say if you have an app with three tiers, free, pro, and premium, can you use flags to control which features of your app are available to use at each tier? And I'm going to give a very complex answer to you for this question, and that answer is yes, you 100% can. Yeah, if you have that data tagged of like users, X user is part of this, um, you can do it. And uh, because Kobe and I are a team, uh, he's been pulling up how you can do that. So Kobe, what is this thing that you have up on screen? Well, so we have this like concept of different types of uh, like features or feature flags. Uh, it kind of like aligns heavily to Martin Fowler principles of feature toggles. So if you like reading really long uh, technical content, uh, check out and you like Martin Fowler, uh, we like it too and link to it. So feel free to check that out. But we label everything as different types and uh, a permission type would fall into that. Uh, it's for a lot, a lot of concepts here, like we do some like default uh, defaulting things in terms of like uh, what we will create on like the next screens um, but uh, in a lot of ways it's to help you kind of like organize uh, your features and flags but at the end of the day what you're going to do here is instead of having you know configuration one configuration two configuration three you might literally just have uh, your three tiers um like it depends on how you want to structure it really the way i've seen it is a couple ways thinking about your configurations here as free pro and premium um and that can essentially map to you know a whole like these can map to whole like sets of different variables and it can be any combination you want you might do a full you might just do like a json like very i've seen people do like json configurations where it's just like hey here's all the different things that i want to have within each of these constructs and so you may do it here or you may turn this into just like a bigger matrix of instead of using free promo and premium defined up here um you may have like a matrix of uh, different configurations and then you could actually use um custom properties uh, to define tiers. So you could have like a custom property that says your tier is uh, one of, um, you know, free, pro or premium. And if it that, that value is passed in, then you take this like matrix of like configuration around uh, your certain sets of features. So two different ways of looking at it, but a uh, long-winded answer to uh, get past the longer winded answer of yes. There we go. I love it. Thank you. That's great. I love, thanks chat. Thanks for being so awesome. <laughs> Call me Carmelo, yeah, yeah. Mild Forest Fire. Thanks for all these awesome questions. Yeah. I thought it was going to, I was worried for my first stream. It was going to be like crickets. So I'm super stoked. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So, um, I know we're, we're, we're kind of almost ready to move into our next segment, but, um, and so that means I guess we'll save our bonus maybe at the end, uh, but yeah. maybe the last thing to talk about, you kind of touched on it briefly. So we've got our initial variable type, we've got variable reassociation, uh, and one that you touched on really briefly is this concept of variable archiving. So what is variable archiving? Yeah, I mean, as with everything, uh, we think about um, the life cycle of your flags is like critically important. So uh, it should be as easy to delete and remove flags from your code as it is to create them. So yeah, I talked about this idea of like reusability and yeah, there's certain cases where it's important to reuse your variables because they're gonna be long lived in like those like permission scenarios or if I wanna control like API endpoints or whatever, like those might live forever. Um, they may not, but in a lot of cases, I'm just like releasing a new feature. I want to like kill it as soon as it's uh, it's essentially out live stable. Um, so in my demo project here, maybe under, yeah, I probably won't. I was thinking about switching over to a prod project because my demo project doesn't actually show uh, code references. Um, but like there's a whole whack of things that we do, which is super cool. Um, one is uh, for cleaning up uh, your code, uh, show you where it is in code, help you to do uh, like code cleanup via like some CLI ASD commands. Can definitely show that off in a future stream. But the most important part there is actually the idea of uh, removing your variables and getting rid of them, uh, you know, as soon as you can. So 
easy way to do that is to archive. Now to archive, you need to have it not be associated with feature. You're like, we don't want to be killing your app mid uh, process accidentally. So if I do look at something like permission control that I just created, if I go and try to archive it, I need to like remove it from that feature. But if I have it unassociated, I can just go in, archive it, clean up my uh, dashboard, make sure it's all nice and clean and tidy. And so if I want to look at my archive features, I can, and my active feature, uh, or sorry, my archive variables, I can know that my active variables are only ones that are actually active running in my code. So uh, just a nice, simple way to keep things clean and tidy. And yeah, definitely would be good to do the next one of these on some of those code cleanup features because that's Love. those are fun nice so uh great question um in chat uh will this stream be recorded and available on twitch once it's no longer live yes um it will live forever in fact you are going to get sick of seeing me tweet and twitch and social media and discord about this this stream i'm going to cut it up into segments i'm going to create memes from this stream all of these things will happen um and uh, and then there'll be another one for us to do this for um amazing so some very cool features, um, some we didn't get a chance to touch on, but I think totally uh, there are, are always so many features that we are releasing. And so we got to sort of like really focus. But if you're watching the stream and you're like, I want to know more about the features, but like, I don't want to read the docs. Well, A, read the docs, but B, you can also talk to us at any time. I am always in the Discord. I'm happy to chat with you about DevCycle all the time until the end of my workday, in which case uh, we live on different areas of the world. So somebody else can take over. Um, but And you're uh, plugging the docs because that's your baby, right? Boom. Yes. There we go. Twitch and Docs are my baby, and I am uh, I'm all about that. Um, so yeah, if you have no idea uh, what I'm talking about when I say Docs, Docs stands for documentation. Um, sorry, that was a little that was a little short there. Um, but let me pull this up. Um, and our DevCycle Docs are actually um, right here on our homepage. Click on View Our Docs. Um, and it will bring you, ooh, that's not full screen. Uh, and it's not bringing you there. We're gonna switch to this tab, share this tab instead. Uh, here, are, here are our docs um, and you can check them out. I am constantly working to update our docs over here. Um, so check them out. Um, yes, and they are, they are my baby, much like this Twitch channel. Um, so, uh, so we've gone through our feature focus segment. Uh, we have, uh, we have focused on many features. Um, but now I'd like to take a minute and actually focus on future features because alliteration and crystal balls are fun. Ooh, there we go. Um, and, uh, we're actually, uh, I'm going to turn this back over to you, Kobe. Uh, I'm going to get yours back up on the screen and, uh, we're going to take a look at our kind of public roadmap and if you are in chat and on the stream and you are looking at um watch the docs yes very much this is that what i said if i did say that that's goal um th thanks code wench um beautiful uh yes so if you want to check out our uh dev cycle roadmap you can head to bit.ly um slash dev cycle roadmap this is live um obviously, because we're live right now, uh, but you too can visit this without needing to log in and create a new account. Um, and so, uh, Kobe, um, we're constantly rolling out features. Um, and obviously, like we're so rolling these out so often that sometimes like we don't have time to update the roadmap as quickly as we can. But like, what are some of the kind of like upcoming features that we're working on that you're that you're really excited about? Oh yeah, definitely. And I think uh, from the roadmap perspective, like, yeah, super stoked if people hop on here. Um, one of our core tenants in like the Eng product side is like ship to learn. So we kind of shipped the roadmap publicly before we had like all content ready. So we're filling out more. Like this isn't like a, a compen, this isn't exhaustive on all the things we're building or planning to build. It's just the things that we've had time so far to write content for. Um, in a way that we want to uh, ship it uh, publicly. As you can see, there's a lot in the launched section. So we spent a lot of time backfilling that uh, to be able to do this. We only did this like a, I don't know, like a month or so ago. So I'm pretty happy with where it's coming so far. Um, the now is pretty thin because we are in Hackathon. And when it comes to Hackathon, uh, we develop things faster than I can write, uh, than we can write content for. So um, there's uh, only one thing on the go, uh, which is go. 
um we're doing a highly performant uh version uh, i'd say like a flavor of our go sdk that uses a native um kind of like decisioning library to make sure that we can address all of the most uh, low latency needs of users so um yeah, it's a fun one. We actually use a really interesting, like, this is not my part of a tech talk. If anyone wants to dig into it later, we use some really cool, interesting, like, cross-compiled languages to be able to make sure when we deliver, like, one feature for an SDK, uh, it can go to, like, all of our SDKs. Um, but that obviously adds some challenges around, like, high-performant languages like Go. Uh, so some fun work there to make sure that that's, like, as low latency as possible. But some really fun things that we're doing in here. Um, I'll just kind of pull up a little bit. Um, the variable cleanup reminders, I talked about us wanting to, I think it'd be great for us to show off some of our like code cleanup stuff, AST kind of things that kind of like do it for you automatically. Um, but one of the super cool things about um, the variable, the feature types that I was talking about is like we can set up some really interesting rules of what it means to clean up, say, a release flag, a experiment flag, a permissions flag. And from all the things that we know about, like who it's rolled out to, how long it's been running, all this stuff, you could say like a release flag needs to be cleaned up within two min two weeks of it, you know, being rolled out to all users and being like error free. And so that's what variable cleanup reminders is all about. It's being about being smart that hey a permissions uh feature that may be like long lived and maybe there forever i don't want to get reminders of i don't want there to be like noise there but i want to make sure i'm removing those other features as soon as possible at least from the conditionals right i want to remove those flags or remove those variables so my code is clean easy to like work with so variable cleanup reminders works with like all those things that i was talking about before that i think would be super cool to show off and that's one that i'm really stoked about I'm actually super stoked about this one. Um, I know it doesn't seem sexy, but it's sexy to me. Um, but one of the really interesting things that we do in DevCycle is this idea of environments. So how we handle environments, again, is a thing that is small, but is very different. Oh, hey, brand new feature while we were on the stream. Um, nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'll let well Nick like that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we are the only ones who kind of like display and manage environments in this way where environments really only work to the service of a feature and it's like targeting within uh, your broader set of environments. But what this allows us to do is within, say, like a single view, like my list here, we can start to show you more interesting things like where, which environments is this running in? How many people in those environments is it targeting? How long has it been doing that for? And I think that idea of like at a glance information about your features, how like how rolled out they are, who they're rolled out to, all this stuff is like super important to having like trust in like a feature flagging platform. So in a lot of ways, unsexy, but sexy to me. Oh, I'm muted again. Uh, I feel like we on stream really did not um, lean in enough to that amazing go pun that Kobe made earlier. Um, I feel as though for all of us at DevCycle, like at the, on the DevCycle team, we've been living and breathing this go world for a while um so also i just want to do a shout out because kobe you mentioned uh that like the wasm go stuff so if you are a go fan um or you are a web assembly fan uh and you are interested in knowing more jonathan our cto who maybe is on the stream maybe is not um brad and adam our chief architect uh were on stream on a different stream uh like yesterday or the day before um i've just linked it in the chat um so if you are can't get enough dev cycle live stream content today um although i will say uh the production value of this live stream is just beautiful but the content of that live stream is spectacular if you're a big web assembly and go fan so definitely check that out um also uh it's just always awesome for more of our dev cycle folks to be uh have the love shared with them uh yeah. after these streams 
are you insinuating that their content is better than my content? Uh, no, I am insinuating if you are a WebAssembly fan, are, are we are we going to have a fight live on stream, Kobe? Is that what's going on right now? I, mean, I thought that's what you were looking for. This is this is how, <laughs> this this is how I this is how I get fired live on stream. <laughs> um, uh, 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 there's no there's no idea. No, I'm I'm super excited and like I love the fact that we have like all of these different pieces. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Um, no, I love that we've got like all of these like different cool pieces that are going on streams right now. And uh, yeah, so no, no, I, I couldn't be happier to be on stream here with you, Kobe. You are my favorite person on this stream right now, aside from myself. Legit. Yeah, the coolest person in the whole wide room. Coolest person in the whole wide room. Yes, 100%. <laughs> um all right uh you got another feature that you're excited about well i mean yeah with limited time i wanted to plug for whoever's watching it the concept of like submitting ideas on here we leverage product board and i'll like uh it's easy to see it mainly because i want we use it to like pull in as much ideas as possible make that as easy as possible so this is fresh so yeah you don't see a lot of the vote like any votes on here yet but we're hoping that uh people will come in and tell us how important or critical they think everything that we're working on is uh if you don't see something in here it's not that we don't have it as an idea we don't have it as our next stop it's like i said each of these things are content that we have to write and we're filling it out as fast as we can but uh if there's something that you'd like to see uh, I'd love for people to submit ideas. You do have to put a valid email address. So you don't fill it up with spam, unfortunately, I guess, or not unfortunately, because I don't want spam in there. Um, but tell us what you want to see, don't want to see. Well, I guess you wouldn't tell us what you don't want to see. Um, but yeah. That, that's what that's what our other that's what our other channel is for. That's what Discord is for. Tell us what you don't want to see there. There you go. Um, but if you are in here, if you're in chat right now, um, and you are interested in kind of sharing which of these features really excite you, throw your comments in chat. Like this is super helpful for us to know. Or head over, um, head over to um, our product board. You can upvote things. Uh, so you can check it out. This is our roadmap on product board where you can go and add your feedback. Um, you can also throw your feedback um, and feature requests and all the rest of that stuff over here in our. Oh, look, I can have both on screen at the same time. It's almost like I know what I'm doing here. Hold the phone. Pretty slick. Pretty hold slick. Hold the phone. Hold on. I got one more to share. I got a, I got a whole, hold on, share screen. Can I share you window? Like a... I'm going to do, come on. What do you got? Nope, wrong thing. Oh, that's like, this is have not you got to stop my sharing first. No, no, no. We're good. There we go. And oh, boom, go. boom. Can I pull it up? Am I going to be able to do it? And what's up? Boom, Discord, yo, what's up? And I think under Get Help, we've got a features request channel and you can go in here and you can request features. That is for you. Um, and now you can see all of the things that I follow on my Discord, uh, but I gotta unshare that um, and uh, and throw throw a product board back up there. So if you've got thoughts, if you've got features that you really like to see, um, be sure to kind of throw them in chat, upvote them over on our uh, roadmap. And we would be really excited to be able to, to kind of get some more feedback on things we're looking to roll out. Um, so, uh, we've looked at our roadmap. We've looked at some very cool features. We've talked, we've answered a lot of questions. I am really happy that people have like been asking questions throughout because I kind of had this like this thought that like if nobody asked questions during the rest of the stream, uh, we would like save this time at the end for people to ask questions, but we don't need to because they've been asking awesome questions throughout. Um, however, uh, maybe you're here watching this stream and you're saying to yourself, I have a question, but I really don't want Andrew or Kobe to embarrass me live on stream and call me out um, because that is 100% what this stream is here for. Um, you can also ask uh, these questions um, in a DM uh, or in, uh, in public um, over on our Discord server. Um, and because uh, the Discord server along with Docs and Twitch are like one of the three things that I own, um, I am now going to bribe you to come and join us over on the DevCycle Discord um, with some uh, gift cards. So I have got up to three $20 gift cards to give away. And all you have to do um, is head over to our Discord server and just at the heck out of me and Kobe, just go at Andrew, at Kobe, I wanna win a gift card. Um, go over there and check it out. Um, we're not gonna be kind of drawing the gift cards um, like, 
probably until next week um at some point uh yeah what's the date today it's like the end of the month so like sometime next week we'll be we'll be drawing these cards so if you're catching the vod of this um there is still time potentially uh so yeah why don't i why don't i like give it i'll give a date i'll give a date so you can do this so uh um if like by may may 5th i think we'll draw we'll draw the names so go over onto our discord at um at kobe and i over there and uh and uh, win a gift card um and also just check out all of the awesome content that is over on our discord um server um it doesn't matter where in the world you are uh we can send you gift cards for wherever you are and they are for awesome places we use a great tool um to do this and uh if you are a dev cycle member watching this stream please also feel free to at kobe and i but you are ineligible ineligible to win the gift card. So unless you are willing to commit identity theft, um, this is probably not the opportunity for you to win a $20 gift card. However, however, uh, perhaps you will um, somewhere else, but not here. Uh, so uh, so yeah, I mean, I think that, oh, and hold on, hold on. I got to use this banner. I, I prepped this banner and now I have to use it. Boom. And I also didn't put it up for feature requests. Feature requests happen. I'll cut this together. The In theme of this uh, of this stream is the banner comes up after the thing happened. It's all right. I'll, fi I'll fix it in post, right? It's not like this is a live stream or anything. Okay. Um, it was live to a few people. It was. Yeah, there's a, I, I'm really, really happy. Like, we have so many viewers in here. Um, yeah, okay. so so head over, join us on Discord, um, and, and check that out. And uh, and that'll be till, till the end of next week, I guess, when we'll draw the names. Uh, all right, I'll remove that. Um, all right. Uh, so, uh, oh, and yeah, last thing. Um, if you were interested in that Martin Fowler person that Kobe was talking about before, um, who is kind of like the uh, guru in the world of feature toggle, oh, that's maybe not the right term, um, but is like a really well-known person in the world of uh, feature toggles, um, check out Martin Fowler. Um, the link is at the bottom of the screen. I think I also put it in chat. Um, so check that out. Um, and now we are to almost the very end of our stream. Um, I'm not going to put that up yet, but uh, I want to say a big shout out to you, Kobe, for joining me, for um, taking on the challenge of being like the first ever feature focused guest and you nailed it. You killed it. Thanks. Yeah, uh, it was fun. I had a good time. I would, would do this anytime with you. I love it. You not also, you kind of knocked like Adam and Jonathan out of the park. So uh, you just like absolutely, That's... absolutely killed it on this stream. Um, Adam and Jonathan, uh, if you would like to up your level and beat Kobe, uh, Feature Focus is always here for you um, to have that opportunity to uh, one up, uh, one up product. Um, I, that's I, I thrive on this kind of like positive reinforcement. You have no idea. I love it. I love it. Um, but but I do want to say thank you so much, you to Kobe. Um, I also want to say thank you to chat um, and everybody who showed up today. Um, be you from the DevCycle team or be you from somewhere that is not the DevCycle team. Um, thank you for being here. Thanks for all the great questions. Um, and uh, and again, we'll be um, having this VOD. It'll be up on social media, on YouTube. We'll be saving it on Twitch. So it's not going to like disappear in a week or anything like that. Um, it is going to be here for you. Um, so thank Thank you so much. Please, uh, if you're not already there, head over and join us on the DevCycle Discord. The link is there at the bottom of the screen. Um, and uh, also, don't forget to find us and follow us or, or check a box about us on uh, on YouTube, on Twitch here, where you're watching us. Um, click that subscribe, pound that subscribe button. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna cut that part. Um, and uh, and also follow us on Twitter um, and on GitHub and all of these amazing places where you can find us. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll be back um, pretty soon. Obviously, next month we'll be back at the end of next month with another feature focus. We'll be looking at some new features that have been released. Um, and I will be back in probably a couple weeks with our first ever Does It Toggle, where I, an amateur software developer and developer advocate uh, um, extraordinaire, uh, will co code live on stream uh and uh see what i can toggle in the world of open source software so uh with all that said thank you kobe thank you everybody for being here uh we will see you next time and uh hope that you enjoyed the stream bye everybody thank you andrew you've been great thank you bye <laughs> all right let's get this card up here oh, there we go see you next time everybody